Welcome back, awesome action toy fans and subscribers. Today, looking at another Lightyear ship. This is the last of the big ones that I've uh, got to review. There's no more after this. Uh, this is the XL1414. Uh, Does it say that on there? Should say that somewhere on it. Elite Universe Protection Unit. So this was part, I think, of a wave two, which really never took off because the movie didn't do well and the toys didn't do well. Shows the content. So you've got this little whatever that is that fires little wing bots. I guess eject. Is that stickers and the tail? It doesn't tell you 14 on there, but it is a 14. Uh, I don't see the name on there. Very interesting. I do have this somewhere. I'll be getting that out soon for another video where I'll be comparing that. Um, Maybe I'll get out of this one. Oh, I see. The bomb goes in there, fires out. This does look particularly nice. Yep, stickers. You can customize your own labels. Pretty cool. This is for their line that's about five inch figures, but it will be obviously compatible with your 118 scale. Your 112 scale, I don't have any figures here that I can show with that, but depending on how big the copy is, it may work. You're looking a bit too small there. But this does look pretty cool. Okay, this is the XL14. I am going to unbox the set it up. I'll be back in a second. Stay tuned. And here it is. This is a really nice looking ship. The only issue is underneath is not nice because the feature, which is a nice feature, the launching net bomb or plasma bomb, whatever you want to call it, looks great, but they leave this big opening underneath. And there's also there's no landing gear with this one, which is, you know, a bit of a disappointment because the other three, other three ships, other four ships have landing gear. So let's get a uh, bit of a close look. Let's turn it around a little bit. So from the front, does look really nice, has to be said. The side profile is nice too. We look from the back, the engine looks engine looks really nice. Again, some dry brushing with some couple of silver colors and like a bronze color. Get a very nice looking uh, a rear, nice looking engine section too. The uh, tail fins are absolutely straight, which is fantastic. If we go from the top, put this back maybe, will this support the weight? Let's come up. It just looks really, really nice. The issue is when we turn it around. So let's get a look at that. But before that, please consider joining the Patreon link in the top right of your screen. Now, you can see all the videos before they're published on YouTube, exclusive content from time to time, and prize draws from time to time too. Okay, so underneath, this is where the issue begins. There is no landing gear with this great big hole ah, where that bomb goes. If they had a trap door that opened and the bomb shot out, that would have been perfect. I mean, you're not going to see that because it's going to be closed most of the time, but I'd be tempted to lose that feature and just make a little cover to cover that. You could add landing gear into these little gaps here, I guess, but I don't know. It's um, It just seems a bit disappointing if you ask me. But that's just my opinion, especially since the other one, two, three, four ships had landing gear, the XL-15, the XL-7, and the Armadillo drop ship. Okay, so features. Go to the bomb last, only two features really. Cockpit opens up, again, it's a nice big seat inside, because it's supposed to um, fit your five inch figures. Will it fit 112? You know, the footwell is very deep, but they're leaning back a lot to the, I reckon they'll possibly fit just that height on that head part, it's gonna be a bit of a worry. So you could fit a 112 in there. And then we have the bomb, there is a button on the wing, this wing, this section here, you can see it's slightly raised. You can fly and then well, a bit of a in for that. And the bomb is meant to spring forwards like this to catch something. I'm not sure why they put metal joints there. I mean, it's nice, but slots back together like this. It only fits in one way. Should be that way. And it's in again underneath. Very nice. So in terms of size, let's get an idea. It's the smallest of the ships, I believe. Lengthwise, we're looking at 15, 15 and a quarter inches. We're looking at 20, 30, 8 and a half, 39 cm. Height-wise, you can see is under Ooh, just about just under five inches, so it's around about 12 and a half 13 cm. 
and then width wise we are looking at about 11 and a half 11 three quarter inches looking at about 29 20 and a half cm so it is a nice size uh no this doesn't come with any figures if i take the buzz from the xl07 stand next to it it just looks massive next to it because there's no landing gear to pick it up but he'll fit in nice and easily because it's a huge space inside a lot of really deep footwell and all oh, he's gonna fit oh he's gonna struggle to fit there we go leaning back now he will fit i take the back 112 scale figures are gonna be like prone lying down completely on their back to fit in there i think less a very small one now if i take my uh a 118 scale take the awesome one of the uh best figures of recent years bullet man from devil's bargain toys if i stand him next to it that looks like a good scale for 118. if i turn it to the side it looks like a good scale but it needs to be raised up landing it would have, would have made all the difference could you add landing gear? You could, but you'd probably have to butcher another ship for it. You can find a cheap XL15 or better yet, a cheap XL7, which is very hard to find. Um, you could possibly butcher and put landing gear, but is it worth the effort on this hard plastic? I don't think so. Now, if I put him inside, you can have more space than you know what to do with. This one, the XL7, I said I'd probably try and, and convert to a two-seater this one I wouldn't it's not wide enough you could have a front to back but the backs be looking at nothing so this one you probably want to just change the seat around to a slightly better slightly more friendly 180 scale friendly seat or possibly block part of the footwell so your figures don't slide down and disappear but that is a very nice looking ship if we compare to the to two of the others so I've got on the table with me first to the XL07 I'll put the landing gear down on this one so it sort of fits in or looks a bit more compatible. See the XL14 is both narrower and shorter and a little bit, no, not, not quite as tall as well. But I like that cockpit, that sort of honeycomb effect looks nice. Very, very cool indeed. If I take this one out, I'll get the XL15, which should be much bigger again. I'll put the landing gear down to make it a bit more even in terms of size. XL15 is far wider, far, a little bit taller, and far longer. But I think I prefer this. So which is my favourite, the XL15, this, or the XL07? I like this shape the most, but the underneath... <sighs> Without having that lander gear, makes you want to say the XL07. Now, speaking of the XL07, interestingly enough, on a sticker sheet provided, they say XL07 and XL14. So I'm not sure whether, I can't remember why their names are interchangeable. Uh, I really can't. And before you say, oh, the other ship's not XL07, you look on the actual ship, it tells you it's 07. So I need to watch that movie again. Nice ship, I like that, glad to have it in my collection. I only got the one, I might try and get another one in the future one of my friends from the US to send it over to me. Okay, this is All Smash Toys signing out, saying please like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon. I'll see you next video soon. Stay happy, keep collecting. Bye-bye.